right? So in order to, to, to get to these nerves, um, the way I do this is a, uh, a vertical incision that's largely here in, in the hairline. Right, so it's in the midline. In the midline. Okay, a vertical incision. Now, do you have to shave the hair? Yes. Okay. We do. Um, in women, and a lot of patients are women because more women suffer from migraines than men, um, we can shave the head in a manner if you have long hair, you'd never know the difference unless you actually lift up your head. Some patients go with it and show up to my office with a partially shaved head and a totally new, uh, <laughs> new uh, hairstyle. <laughs> but um, uh, yes, we do have to, we do have to shave uh, around the, the incision. Um, and then I go down through the, the fascia, the midline, down to uh, the muscle layers and then dissect um, to one or the other side and, you know, without going too, right. too detailed, too granular. Yeah. Um, find the nerve. And then we trace the nerve from its deepest point to its most superficial point in what we call the subcutaneous tissue or the fatty area just below the skin because these are all sensory nerves at the end of the day at the end of their course they are providing feeling or sensation to parts of the scalp so they're going up into the fat below the skin and there's no compression there um, and so we trace it to get up to that point mm -hmm. and he, back here um, I'm going through the trapezius through the splenus capitis um, taking out little pieces of muscle and also making kind of a trough for the muscle to, to lie in. For the nerve. Uh, for the nerve to yeah. lie in, excuse me, thank yeah. you. And I do that for the greater occipital and for the lesser occipital. And then before we close, um, we take a, a, a flap, so a little kind of piece of fat that is just below the skin, and put it along the nerve to, again, prevent further scar tissue or compression from happening. So we kind of pad the nerve with a piece no, of fat. phospholipid cushion. There you go, right? <laughs> Um, over for the um, lesser occipital nerve, I usually make a smaller uh, separate incision at, uh, again, down uh, the back of the neck towards kind of towards the side. Um, and that incision is usually uh, an inch maybe mm -hmm. and go down to, to the muscle layer. We can find that nerve relatively easily. Um, if it's easily decompressed, then we'll decompress it. But for the smaller nerves, um, of which the, the um, third occipital, the lesser occipital, and we'll talk about the ones in the temple as well, these nerves really innervate very, very small areas. So sometimes if the nerve looks really bad, we'll just cut the nerve right. and bury it in an adjacent muscle to prevent what's called a neuroma or an abnormal growth of the nerve, which can also be painful. Um, and then we close things up. We use buried sutures, so there are no sutures to come out. Uh, some people use a drain. I don't, I don't use a drain. Um, and, you know, after surgery, it's a, you can be sore because we're cutting, we're cutting muscles. Right, it's um, still but, surgery. Right. But patients can, can um, tell the difference between post-operative soreness versus migraines. Hmm. Excuse me, two totally different things. So, um, so patients will have soreness for a couple of days, um, sometimes a couple of weeks. And actually, sometimes they'll have good and bad days of actual migraines afterwards. Um, again, the nerve has been manipulated during the surgery and is kind of angry. Right. And you have post-operative swelling too. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, some patients will have worsening, worse days, better days, and over time, over the next few months, kind of equilibrate to a, to a situation which in more cases than not is favorable to what they had before surgery. So in the occipital area, you make a small vertical incision in the midline. That's in the hair-bearing area. So it, once that heals, you're not going to see that. Right. You have small little uh, incisions on the back of the neck, a little bit to the side, if you if, if necessary. If you have short hair, you yeah. could see them, but they tend to heal very they tend, well. And it's in a, it's those in a, go away. Yeah. Uh, how long does that specific procedure take, just for the back of the head? So it takes about two to three hours if you're going to do both sides. Okay. And then uh, for that surgery, you'll be laying face down, which we call a prone position. It's under general anesthesia, uh, which means there's a tube to help support you breathing. Um, and it would be done in a surgery setting, like a, like a surgery center or a hospital, just FYI. 